All right, let's look at another CSCS math problem. Uh, this one is probability, um, dice probability. So you throw a die n times, uh, using a num you know, every throw produces a number between one and six with equal probability, which they don't say. Uh, what is the probability that the sum of the numbers is between a and b? Uh, okay, and they give us n, a, and b. I'll put the answer around six decimal places. Um, so how does probability work? It's basically uh, the same as counting, um, right? That is, the probability of something is the number of outcomes where it happens divided by the total number of outcomes. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful with this, right? You can't just say, oh, well, the dice produce a number between 1 and 6n, so what fraction of the numbers between 1 and 6n are between a and b? Because not all the numbers are equally likely, right? If you throw two dice, you're more likely to get 7 than 2. Um, but what is equally likely is, uh, you know, each dice is going to equally likely from 1 to 6, and so there's like 6 to the n equally likely things, right? The first dice can be anything from 1 to 6, the second dice can be anything from 1 to 6, the third dice anything from 1 to 6, and so on. Um, and so if you take the total number of, right, if you split up those like vectors into adding up to k, then you can find out the probability of getting k, which is the number of those vectors that add up to k divided by 6 to the n, which is the total number of vectors. Because right? each of those vectors is like equally probable. Uh, so yeah, you need to formulate the problem in some way that everything is equally probable, uh, and then just count the ways. Um, that said, we're going to do uh, not exactly that, but it'll be, I mean, it'll be equivalent, obviously, because we're going to get the right answer. Um, let's just jump in and, and see. So we can read in n, a, and b. Um, So P I K is probability getting K with I and this. Okay, and we're gonna build this up. Right, so this is the vector that we're gonna build up. Um, obviously the base case. If you all zero dice, you know, you're guaranteed to start with zero, basically. And you can't start with anything else. And then PIK is the sum is 1 to 6. Right, so like condition on what happened with the last die. Uh, right, so with the first I minus dice, you must have gotten something within 6. And then the last die could have taken you. Uh, To that actual value. So there's a one-sixth chance that the last die rolled any particular number, uh, and then for that particular number, you know, there's some chance that you could have gotten it with the previous dice. Um, so that will be it, and then the answer will just be the sum of p uh, n minus 1 a through b. So it should go up to that. So we're just 
running this recurrence for every value of i and k. This is basically a dp, in fact. Um, and because we're always looking at i minus 1, as long as we go in increasing order of i, uh, this will be fine. Um, and runtime is totally fine, right? This is 100, this is 600, this is 6. Uh, so we're like less than a million operations. And we just add together the probability of getting A, the probability of getting A plus 1 all the way up to B. A is less than B, sure. Uh, e and minus 1 right, with all of the dice is the probability that you get this value. Using actual floating point numbers, so we'll use LD for double. These are 64 bit floating point numbers. Um, right, also, we have the like dot zeros. Uh, so, yeah, floating point math is a little bit wonkier than integer math. Right? Notice that they're asking us to under six decimal places because like it's not clear what the exact uh, value would even mean. Um, and to do six decimal places, I believe you do that. So yeah, this is basically kind of a DP-like idea, um, conditioning on the last die. Uh, we can get a set of recurrence, and then we can just you know run that recurrence. Um, so yeah, so our first probability problem. 